last jump. Mason Plumley got an offensive rebound, as did Miles Plumley. Three shots already on the first possession for Duke. Just look at him out here on the floor, matched up. It is a rather notable size advantage Big. for Duke. You overcome that, though, with scrappiness. you got to pressure the ball, and you've got a gang rebound. Everybody's got a board for Michigan. No, not Singler able to knock that one down. The long possession for the Blue Devils, and they end up getting the basket. Michigan is going to really have to handle intense defensive ball pressure because Duke wants to disrupt their rhythm. But Darius Morris is going to have to be like that. Oh, and that one rolls around at least once. And He's, Morris gets the basket for Michigan. He's got to be aggressively looking to penetrate, utilize his size advantage to get good looks at the basket for himself and for his teammates. Novak matched up with Mason Plumlee. Douglas on Smith, Hardaway Jr. on single. Mason Plum. Back outside, no. Pass intercepted. Morris challenging Curry. Goes to his left side, and again, he gets the roll. Duke never trailed on Friday night. And it's win over Hampton. Buck Joyner's team, the Pirates, knocked out by Duke. Duke never trailed, but down an early bucket here. Great aggressive defense here by Michigan, and then the size advantage. Plumley to a cutting single and the pass gets away. Three on two. Part away down the middle to the wing. Novak. Three. That's excellent execution for Michigan. Novak made four of six three pointers on Friday, Jim. They're going to need this three point shooting. But you've already seen the activity in the defense by Michigan. Active hands and another turnover for us. It's Morris. Over to Hardaway. Singler defends it. But they're going to play by Singler. Outside Morris with a three. It's short and Singler comes away with the rebound. Snaps the outlet to Smith. Wants to take on Douglas. Banks it home. Boy, that's a huge turnaround. And give all credit to Singler, who never gives up on any play. He is relentless in his effort at both ends of the floor. Pressure here, Jim. That's what Michigan's gonna have to deal with all game long. Douglas trying to bounce it to Morgan. Smith. Three no go. And Douglas is fouled by Miles Plumley. Andre Dawkins is gonna check in for Duke. Dawkins went 13 in the game against Hampton. He's been on a nice roll of late, Jim. We're talking about Dawkins. 36 points in his last four ball games. Evan Smotrich coming in for Michigan. 6'9 freshman. Gives him size and also gives him an outside shooter. Morris backs off Smith. And that last touch by Douglas. That turnover forced by pressure, though. Douglas was thinking about the defender. Didn't cleanly see the ball into his hands. And that's what Duke is. We've talked about the return of Irving primarily from an offensive standpoint, but what he allows them to do is be much more aggressive defensively in pressuring the basketball. Whenever he comes into the game, he'll continue to apply that defensive ball pressure. Sittler finds a cutting Miles Plumley. Boy, he zipped it in there. <laughs> he had to. Seth Curry, excellent defending the ball, leads this team in steals. Douglas, who was the starting point guard last year for Michigan. And now a co-captain with Novak, who has it. The first break in the action. Single. With a couple of, well, three rebounds. And a beautiful assist right here. Will. Determination. Perseverance. All are critical to a student athlete's success. But for some, it's just the beginning. Because after their playing days, they'll take the lessons. 900 wins. His game against Hampton on Friday night was his 100th inside the NCAA tournament. First coach to ever have that 
many games inside the tournament. He's got the most games, the most wins, 78 and 22 all time. How about that? 78 percent of the time he's been on the victorious side in NCAA tournament play, including four national championships. Good active zone defense here. It's kind of turned the game for Michigan in the late part of the second first half against Tennessee on Friday, Jim. We've got a held ball, and I think we're headed the other way. Yep, it's going to Michigan. This Michigan team that was really in trouble in late January, one and six. You see Morris. He called a team meeting after they lost to Minnesota January the 22nd. He went to the coach and said, I need to, I need to talk to everybody. Then opened up the meeting. They were tied for last inside the Big Ten. Actually, were tied with Indiana, but Indiana had beaten them head to head. So last out of the 11. Mm -hmm. And Morris said, I'm going to start with myself. I got to play better. I got to play harder. Mm -hmm. And boy, did they turn it around. They went from one and six in the league to nine and nine, finishing in a tie for four. Morris getting some attention in the training crew. Yeah, he got taken up there. Hopefully it's nothing serious because they need his presence, his leadership, and his production here today. Bobridge was the star late in that first half against Tennessee with nine of his 11 points. Provides a nice injection of energy and all-around play. But this will be the story of the game, Jim. Can Michigan handle 40 minutes of non-stop defensive heat? They're on the shot clock. Smotless tries to help out. Douglas puts up the three. Singler with four rebounds. Michigan has to get Morris back on the floor. No question. Michigan. They will mix defenses, Jim. On D-line likes to try to keep the opposing team off balance with changing defenses. Singler on the drive. Or whatever defense you play, you better stop the ball from penetrating. Very aggressive start by Kyle Singler. Last six points to do. Yeah, he's got an inexhaustible motor. I can't recall when I've seen him tired, nor can I recall seeing him take a playoff. Go back, no. Spotridge in the right place. Hardaway had battled for the rebound, and it bounced around over to the hands of Spotridge. Breaks in Michigan, dry spell at 425. For Spotrich, big time, big time. Good aggressive take that time by Nolan Smith, and he's done it all year long. Kyrie Irving will be coming in on the next whistle. I don't really have the ability of somebody to break down the defense here so they've got to rely on one another do the Wolverines especially when Darius Morris is not on the floor Ball on Curry as Mason Plumley comes back out and now Irving for the first time didn't even really realize it until a short while after the game that Kyrie's line in the end half the game the 14 points actually led them in scoring <laughs> yeah. Call timeout and not cleared by the doctors. Dr. Anderson clearing him to play on Monday. And then Coach K, he knew that ultimately the decision would be with his father. He was cleared again Monday, the day after the ACC championship game. Coach K called it a surprise. On a 1 to 10, he called it a 10. That's right. Very highest level of surprise for him and a pleasant one it is. He's been engaged with his teammates emotionally and there every step of the way, and now he's able to be there physically. That was a block by Mason Plumley off Smotnich and Smith at the other end. Novak got the charge. Stepped in and drew the charge on Nolan Smith. Jim anticipated quite well. Coach K doesn't agree with it. But from that angle, it looks pretty good. Facing him in position just for an instant and outside of the Imaginary area that goes underneath the basket about two feet, so 
Good call. Look who's back in. Darius Morris, the leading scorer, the top assist man in the Big Ten. For a team that is the youngest in the Big Ten this year, not a senior on the squad. Look at this defensive pressure. He's the one guy that can break it down and finish over it. Going back to Duke. Well, you have to be ready to catch and finish right away against that intense pressure of Duke's defense. Already five turnovers. The Duke four for Michigan. Back to the zone now. Seems like they might go man to man after makes Jim. Perhaps the zone after misses a turnover. Wide open. And Singler knocks it down. Now, Michigan went the last 34 minutes against Tennessee without attempting a free throw. They were 0 for 1 for the game. Morgan missed, trying to complete a three point play. It's the first time anybody ever won a game in tournament history without making a free throw. And they've gone eight minutes here without attempting one. There's not much happening inside. There's a foul on Irving. The Irving whistle for that one. It's Duke by seven. Right here with Andre Dawson, who's going to go to Irving and then right down to Singler. And defenders cannot move as fast as a hot potato basketball. And a good wide open look for Singler, who's been very aggressive and productive to start. Seven points, and he's made three or four. Finds itself in front by seven. As Hardaway kicks it corner. And no back. Zach Novak showing that outside game he had against Tennessee. Had that double double, 14 and 10. A nice jump out there by Morgan. He's got to rotate back now. Good job defensively there by Michigan. I tell you, both of these teams do a nice job with their defensive schemes. The Duke, it's about ball heat, pressure on the ball, everybody together. Michigan does a little more trapping occasionally, and then everybody rotates. Singler with an air ball that time. When the dribbler dribbles the ball to the wingman in Michigan's offense, then that guy will typically back cut. Morris step back to get the separation. And it's going to be called on Jordan Morgan. See real stories of human achievement featured on the Buick Human Highlight Reel at NCAA.com slash Buick. Morgan had two fouls in the first half on Friday. Been set for 16 minutes. That's his first. And look at the Duke Blue Devils. They've got tremendous perimeter players out there now with Irving, Smith, Curry, and Singler. They can space the floor. They'll play four round one with Plumlee in the low post. He's an excellent passer. Curry just back in. He's 0 for 3 from the outside. That was a good shot, though. They got it inside, and Plumlee feeling the double team was able to pass it out to Curry, and that's the fifth foul. On Duke is Curry guilty of it. And that's his second. Ryan Kelly inserted. 6'11 sophomore from Raleigh. Let's go. Let's go, and this will be interesting. Now Kelly will have to match up with one of these smaller Michigan wing guys, either Novak or Douglas perhaps, and break down on the out-of-bounds play. And that might have been due to the substitution right there, Jim. Guys not quite on top of their particular matchups. Hardaway gets the basket. We'll be going to the line. Green light on Monday. His first test out on the floor was with the assistant coaching staff at Duke. Had a little scrimmage late Monday afternoon with the likes of Wojo and Chris Collins and Chris Patola. 
Now he's coming out. You see, he goes right past all those assistants. Nate James there, member of the 2001 National Championship team. The Dolphins came up empty there, got jammed up, maybe kicked or stepped on. to Dawkins. Jim, I like the tap back, but more than liking the tap back, if I, think, I think if a guy gets his hand on it, he should try to reel it in. Unless you know you can pass it to somebody. But the blind tap back is a dangerous play. Dawkins over Hardaway. Tough shot. Hardaway trying to close in on time. But you said it. Dawkins has been catching fire here late. They like what he's been doing defensively too, Jim. He just continues to grow as an all-around player, and that stroke is honey sweet. Singler falls as Boris had a shot, perhaps. Passed it up, and Novak instead is able to drain another three. Heads up play by Darius Morris. That's Mason with the putback. And a little too tight of coverage. Mason Plumley's first. CBSSports.com has improved its award-winning fantasy baseball game. To make it even better in 2011, choose from three game styles today. CBSSports.com slash baseball. So that's the sixth team foul, so Miles will come in for Mason. That was interesting hearing Coach Beeline tell Tracy about how with this game, and the fact they played Ohio State three times, Kansas once during the season, this is in essence their fifth game against the one seed. Now those other four, they were close in three of them. Yeah. They gave a couple of really close battles with the Buckeyes. And they were, took Kansas to overtime. Smiley's with a three. He is fearless. Talk to Laval Jordan, one of the assistant coaches. And one of the things with Smotrich is he doesn't allow missed shots to affect his confidence. He is always hunting for his perimeter shot. One of the assistants, Bakari Alexander, calls him Larry Legend. <laughs> and that is Ryan Kelly hitting the baseliner. Smotrich is from just outside of Boston, about five miles outside of the city center. Spacing here. Michigan loves to get that ball up top, space the floor, and it's effective because they've got guys that can make the three point shot. Smotrich being one of them. Morris between Singler and Kelly kicks it out. Can he do it again? Novak! Zach Novak has three from outside the arc. Jim, they make on average eight a game, and to have a chance today, they've got to make at least that or more. Smotridge with the push off. Novak in the firepower for the Wolverines, but seven different Devils have scored two by two. Chris Moore is going to get in here, penetrate, kick it out to Douglas, who then is going to find Novak right behind the three point line. Excellent work. Drive, draw defenders, kick it out. And then the extra pass, wide open, warm-up jumper, splash. Zach Novak grew up in Chesterton, Indiana, right in the Valparaiso area. One of his first tournament memories is just a third grader. His mother was working at a nearby high school, and he got called over the intercom speaker to come to the principal's office, thought he was in trouble. The principal told him, your mom called, wanted to let you know that Bryce Drew just hit the winner for Valpo in the NCAA tournament. That was against Mississippi, is that right, I think? Was it Ole Miss? It was. I think yeah. it was Ole Miss, yeah. Back in 98. Yeah, the um, Pacer play, I think, is the name of that. Homer Drew. Bryce's dad. Imagine that getting called back to the principal's office. Uh -oh, what did I do? And having that kind of a surprise. Yeah. I think the name of that play was Pacer, I think is what it was called. 
You would, you would know that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're yeah. asking me. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Let me get a hand signal for what it was. <laughs> you forgot? No, no, I'm pretty sure. I'm actually quite sure it was called Facebook. He scored about a thousand points off of that. <laughs> That kid's got some game. He sure does. I love what he can do. When you can shoot the three-point shot, especially if you've got some size, guys that are defending you aren't typically used to guarding you, especially a big like Miles Plumley. Showed him the ball and then got to the rim. Finally, Michigan to the line, okay? <laughs> it's been 40 sen 47 minutes of tournament play since they last attempted their only other free throw attempt, which was missed. Their first man belongs to Smuckrich, who grew up a big Duke fan, by the way. Loved Shane Battier, that was his guy. Hard not to like Shane Battier, winner, leader, role model. Irving back in, he is, uh, Pushed outside by Morris, his first. And that's the 15 foul on the Wolverines. Well, Michigan has this game right where they want it, primarily in the half court. Bench warning, I think, on Coach John Beeline. I'm not sure exactly if he was out of the box or if he was making a comment that is deemed inappropriate, inappropriate, but he has been so warm. The next time it could be a technical. Bob it. Smith with the assist to Mason Plumway. Beautifully done too, Jim. Went up as if he was going to shoot it and then got it right to the side of the rim for the much taller Plumway. Smotridge, top of the key. Got a three this time. He and he's got 11 points. He can pick and pop you now, and he set a strong screen on Smith. And as a result, he was able to step back. Actually, it was Irving that he picked off. he got a confident stroke, doesn't he, Jim? Oh. <laughs> and 6-9, too. And he knows he can beat you on the inside, too. Put it on the floor. Irving. And Morris, and it's two whistles against Morris the last two times at that end of the floor. And that's a tough one. As we take a look at Kyrie Irving, his rehab, a progressive process. Building on each day. He's got tremendous care and guidance. And the training staff is good. Nick and Jose. Yeah. Did a fabulous job. Saw a lot of water work that was involved. That, that toe that was, you know, I guess the simplest way of putting it, was dislocated in that game against Butler back on December 4th. He was trying to make a move on Matt Howard. And that's when the injury occurred. Well, Jim Morris just sat down with two fouls. He probably six the rest of the half. And that's kind of when Michigan sputtered a little bit without him on the floor. Look at Smotrich handle the ball. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, no. no. No, that was a nice move. So they'll put it in his hands and try to play through him, it looks like. But again, Morris is the other guy that can create offense for other people. Can Michigan stay tight during this stretch with Morris on the bench with foul trouble? Golden Smith. Plumley kept it alive. For another empty trip, and you might think about calling a timeout if you well, you got the under four media timeout coming up, but depending on what transpires here, you might not be able to wait. Look at John Beeline. Hardaway Jr. yet to get off. Hardaway. Irving boxing out on Spockford, who really wanted it that possession. Comes out, tries to close in, but makes contact. Spot Rich. Spot Rich is second.
every tournament game live online on your iPhone or iPad with NCAA March Madness on demand. For details, go to mmod.ncaa.com. So fouls starting to be, become an issue here for Morgan, for Morris, and for Smotrich. And John Horford checks in for the first time. And Jim, I think it was 26-26 when Morris sat down with the second personal foul. Smotrich has had a terrific first half, one on one and one here for Singler. But we may not see Smotrich the rest of the way. Look at this rebound all the way out to midfoot and Douglas. Irving could not block it. It looked like for a minute he might have a play on it. Steve Douglas. Douglas and Novak, the only two Wolverines with any NCAA tournament experience. That's Kelly, two-pointer. He can stroke it. He can stroke it so much, he made 18 straight field goals. <laughs> in a four-game stretch back in February, and they weren't chippy. Seven of them were from three-point land. 18 consecutive makes. Two off the Duke team record of Ella Abdelnavi. Hardaway. Tapped out to Douglas, who steps back wide on a three. Four free throws, no field goals. Kelly. That's going to Michigan. Out of the break. 3.09 to go in the half. 33 28 Duke. along Clark Kellogg, Jim Nance here in Charlotte. Duke leads it. And look at inside the arc, Duke 10 of 11. Yeah, very good. And matter of fact, they like to shoot the three, does Duke, but it might make sense for them to really be adamant about trying to throw that ball inside the rest of the way this first half. So Michigan. Five out of 10 for three. Yep, yeah, and they've gotten good looks for Novak. He's made three of them. Yeah, and Smotrich two for two. Yeah. Michigan and Duke. Playing in the NCAA tournament for the third time. The other two occasions were at the Final Four. Back in, well, back in 1964, they played in the Final Four. And Duke won at 91 to 80. That had to be Cassie Rose. Back in the Cassie days at Michigan. And then, of course, the national championship matchup in 1992 when Duke repeated as national champions and beat them by 20. Beat the five freshmen. As Horford takes it strong to the basket. Wow. And one. Wow, young fella. Young man who's gained about 30 pounds since arriving last summer. And he used all of them here, partner, as he went through Ryan Kelly, who kind of drifted as he tried to block that, didn't go straight up with him. Trying to jump out of the play. Oh, and he gets a nice bounce. His older brother, Al, who's won back-to-back -back championships with Florida back in 06 and 07. That foul was on Ryan Kelly. John Horford with a little glimpse of the future <laughs> at Michigan. A little more weight. He's already gained a dimension of quite a bit since coming there. Well, you talk about the glimpse of the future as Horford picks up the foul there as he was late in the rotation. But you've documented it, Jim. No seniors on the roster for Michigan. And you think about the development of these young guys, the camaraderie and chemistry they have. I mean, the, the future is very promising for John Beeline and his team. And this tournament experience. Well said. One and one, no for Singler. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm impressed. I thought at the 5-16 mark, we're tied. 26 all. Duke goes on a little 5-1 spurt, 5-zip spurt with Darius Morris off the floor, but it's been all about team for Michigan all season long, and John Beeline getting contributions from everybody that he puts in the game. Nolan Smith, that's the ninth team foul and the second on the Duke co-captain. And the ACC Player of the Year and Tournament Player of the Year. Irving in for Smith. Coach K will sit him down with the two. One and one coming up for Douglas. Horford keeps it alive. And Plumley taps it over to Singler. And Irving will bring it up.
Singler will go to the line. He's 0 for 2. Horford picks up his second. So Kyle Singler came into this game needing one rebound. He got that right off the first minute. So he has uh, to join this very distinguished group with 2,000 career points and 1,000 career rebounds. He's achieved that in this game today. But he's 0 for 3 at the line. There's Blake McClymans that just came in from Michigan. That's a special club, Jim. The 2K, 1K club. I only had it with the airlines. <laughs> well, Not on the hard way. Yeah, there are different ways to get to it, I guess. <laughs> Doing a nice job not allowing any of the back cut action to be successful for Michigan. You can tell they're well prepared and executing nicely in that aspect of their defense. Hard away outside. This could tie it. Low back. Excellent defensive possession that time by Duke. Closed off the cutters and then was then challenged the three-point shooter. Here's a three. McClyman's underneath for Michigan. Just into the game. Timeout Duke. Good at seven. First half. Michigan hanging tough. The team had to play some extra basketball to get there, but the first two wins in the program's history in the NCAA jump. San Diego State heading to the Regional there in Anaheim and will face the University of Connecticut on Thursday night. It'll be a pretty good matchup. Kimball Walker and that young UConn team has been very impressive. Douglas. That is the 10th team foul, so it'll be to the rest of the half. Rick Patino. He's in the studio doing a great job. He sure is. It's fun to group. listen to him yep. talk basketball. And he'll be in there at at t at the half, plus a Naismith watch presented by at t All coming up. And it would be fun to hang out with those guys now. I mean, obviously, I've got to call this game here, but if you could just be sitting there, those guys are solid. John Adams, we hear, is going to be in the studio, too, the NCAA oh, director okay. of uh, officials. And I mean, Greg Anthony, Kenny Smith, Charles Barkley, Rick Patino. John will be in there. John okay, Adams John to talk Adams. about that whole clock situation. Yeah, it'd be interesting to at hear the end of the first out. game. Moving all six points for him coming from the line. Another danger zone here. Hardaway fouled on the shot. And that's the tenth team foul on Duke. And for Singler, that's his first foul. After an early lead of seven for Duke back at the 12-24 mark, Jim, it's kind of been pretty much within this um, three to five point window. The old window. Yeah, the window shows up. It's a fairly tight one, just slightly cracked. Hardaway Jr., the second leading freshman scorer in the Big Ten. Only top by Jared Sullinger. Two for two at the line that time. Duke has not made a basket for the last three minutes. And the half-court trap here by Michigan, 1-3-1, one, one, which is a difficult defense to handle if you don't attack the seams. Oh, jumped up high to deny Plumley. The huge size advantage there. The call goes against the Wolverines. Goes on Douglas. So again, two at the line coming up. Well, let's take a look. Kyrie Irving getting it over the top. Good deflection. And there it is, yeah. Stu Douglas and Vogels both were wrapped around Plumlee's arm, so a good call. Duke not helping itself at the free throw line, Jim. No Singler has struggled. Irving 6-6. Six six. Plumlee, though, just missing that one. Both of them. Michigan can take the final shot here of the half. That's exactly what they should do. Five Wolverines, however, with two fouls each. 
including Morris, who's had to sit here in the late going of the half. Morgan and Smutrich. We know the contributors. Jim, we saw that in the first game as well. Douglas with five, back outside. Whipped over to Bogic to tie it. No. And a whistle with one second to go. I think they got McClyman. I think they got Blake McClyman for a push. Uh, that's going to be really a tough one for Beeline to accept because, again, it'll put Duke on the line for a couple. And Irving will be there. He's six of six. I'm starting to make the point. Irving, a 90% free throw shooter. Made all four on Friday. His first miss. Kyrie. His name in Greek is Lord Have Mercy. That's what it translates to. His name by his late mother's father. Gets the second one. Just go it down as far as you can. No, they're just going to. That won't do you much good. Douglas launches it anyway. Smodrick. Second half coming up here in Charlotte. Duke leads it by four. Jim Nance, Clark Kellogg, Tracy Wolfson here courtside. And the winner moves on to the regionals and the Sweet 16. What are we going to see here in the second half? Well, Michigan has to continue to knock down the three-point shot. I thought their bench did a really good job of staying tight when Darius Morris had to sit down with the foul trouble, as did Evan Smotrich. Duke is going to continue to try to apply the pressure. As Charles Barkley talked about, Duke will try to wear down the smaller yet scrappy Michigan team. You take a look at the stats there and uh, good balance across. By, presented by LG. Smotrich, 11 points and didn't play all that much because he had the two fouls. Got nine minutes of action. Game is brought to you in HDTV by LG. Life's good. Games have been good so far today too, Jim. They have. North Carolina coming from behind to beat Washington. John Adams clearing up some issues there at halftime, doing a good job. Yeah, a very strong job. And I thought that was the case, Jim, because you do have to give time for that whistle to be blown by the official. And there is a natural lag time, so a moot point, but well explained by John Adams. And well discussed by our guys in the studio also. Teams out with the first five. And Smith. Oh, Ooh, that somehow gets down and out, but the follow up by Miles Bormley. Now six offensive rebounds for Duke. And nine to two in second chance points, and it's a six point differential. Underneath Morris. Got away from his man. And who was connecting on that play, Jim? Jordan Morgan. Darius Morris, two guys who had to sit quite a bit in that first half because of the uh, two fouls both have. But Michigan has to have its key guys stay away from foul trouble, and then they've got to be able to somehow do a better job on the defensive glass. And continue to make threes to have a chance. Duke has to try to disrupt rhythm and get offense from Singler, Smith, and perhaps somebody else. Back over to Morris. Three point shot. An excellent look in transition. The lob. Oh, Plumley. Run underneath. Has to go outside with it. He's picked off by Novak. Michigan has numbers here, Jim. Morris. Looking for the contact. No call. Should have got a better shot than that. They had a five on four there. An extra pass, and they could have gotten an open look. Hold on Singler in the paint, and that's his first. I like the fact that Michigan early on has looked to try to quick hit Duke. You know, if you can get in transition, you don't have to deal with that intense ball pressure in the half court that Duke, Duke applies. Bumley off on the jumper.
for the steal. Sets up Hardaway corner. And Miles underneath. Miles and Mason. Ryan Kelly at the scores table, Jim, about to check in, perhaps for one of the Plumleys. Boy, Jeff Curry got away with an offensive foul there. He pushed Darius Morris to try to get open. Singler. And again, it's on Hardaway. He picks up his first two here in the first three minutes of the second half. What do you call a team of CIA operatives who defy intelligence? Chaos premieres Friday, April 1st, only CBS. So six different Wolverines now with two fouls each. Singler doing a nice job on that last possession, really being aggressive in driving to the basket. Kelly got it over to Smith, and it's going Michigan's way. And it's a timeout called by Duke. The margin, like halftime, is four. But all of this would be later expunged from the record books like it never existed. The Fab Five turned out to be the fabricated five. And as they brought on sanctions, this group and those that followed immediately after, that really put the Michigan program into a tailspin a dozen years before they would return to the tournament. Of course, there's been a recent documentary about that bunch, that Michigan team back then. And inside of it, there were some incendiary remarks about Coach K and the players he recruited to Duke. And Grant Hill this past week wrote an article for the New York Times defending the Duke program and the kids that come to play for Coach K. Defended his family, defended his Duke family, and reminded Jalen Rose specifically at the end that he never lost to Michigan in his career. A couple of thoughts on that, Jim. Obviously, a significant slip up in semantics by Jalen Rose. I've not seen the documentary, heard about the Uncle Tom comments. Both he and Grant Hill are extremely positive role models. But within any group of people, race, culture, family, there are vast and very differences of experience, outcomes, and perspectives. And I think those were shared, and we move on. Morgan gets the shot inside. But it's been a long road back for Michigan. That basketball program went under for a long, long time after that punch brought on all that sanctions. And that is Smith with a three. Long range three for Smith. He's been relatively quiet so far, but he can wake up in a hurry. Ten points now for Nolan Smith. But Michigan kind of hanging around. Touch last by Duke. Kyrie Irving comes back. Irving in that first half. What about his play? Clark in that first half. Irving over one from the field, seven of eight from the line, seven points, two rebounds, and an assist. Solid considering that game action has not been a part of his regiment until just Friday. And one of the things you have to work through is the recovery time and getting back into action rather quickly, and that only comes through game time. Morgan, he traveled, trying to set up another lay-in. He had made one just a moment before. Michigan's first turnover in the last 17 minutes. One reason why they've been able to hang with the number one seed. Morris is gonna act like he's gonna set a screen, but react and slip the screen for an easy one. But you see, behind Plumley, that area is wide open because of the spacing. All five Wolverine players above the three-point line, and that avails itself to the back door over the top pass. Coach Beeline's first ever Division I game as a head coach came at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Took Canisius there. December of 1992, after the Devils had won the championship earlier that spring and went on the way to win it again. And that's a two-point shot by Smith. Beeline brought Canisius to Duke to open up his coaching career in Division I. They got beat 100 to 62. So he's been waiting for another, another little matchup. He's done quite a job. Four programs to the NCAA tournament and Michigan for the second time in three years. Duke's now matched its largest lead of the game. And here you 
see the spacing of Michigan. You got to be able to knock some of these down if you're Michigan. That has to happen because Duke is not allowing a lot of penetration. Smith. Oh, he knocked the defender just with the move. Twisted him into the floor. And this crowd is loving it here in North Carolina. Charlotte reacting to the brilliant move by Nolan Smith. 7 nothing run by Duke. An ankle breaker. What a move by the savvy Smith, the senior, and the two leading candidates for National Player of the Year. Having good tournament runs for sure as Morgan is rejected by Miles Brumley. It took too long to get that one up and down, Jim. He has to shoot that one immediately. What a stretch by Smith. He scored the last nine points in this game. And they have been big-time highlights. Morris, <laughs> meanwhile, called for his third. Many would say that he is the player of the year. And you certainly have to keep him in the middle of the conversation. Jimmy for Deck, Kimber Walker as well. But Lona Smith right now, clearly the player of the game here. He has scored 10 points in the last two minutes, 10 seconds. A personal surge and assault by Smith on the Wolverine. Morris gets two back. Singler underneath his second. Singler and Smith, they had decisions to make after the championship last year, whether to come back or not. And once Singler made the decision, that really crystallized the decision for Nolan Smith. Could have been a whole lot different, he said, if Kyle was leaving. Yeah. They've been, yeah, they've been together the whole time. They wanted to try to get another championship together. Douglas. No back. Part away. Top of the key. No. Michigan's missed its last seven from behind the edge. Yeah, and we talked about it. They made five in the first half on 13 attempts, and in order to have a chance to stay with or even beat Duke, they were going to have to make at least another five more in the second half. Smotless back on the floor defending, and it didn't take long for him to pick up his third. So three for Smotrich, three for Morris. And he's incredulous. 14 fouls on Michigan in the half. Well, Duke's starting to feel it now. They staggered him with a couple of buckets from Smith. Now trying to put the haymaker together. But Michigan's ability to shoot the three always gives him a chance to shave deficits quickly. Kyrie Irving. And that's his second. Team foul number two on Duke, and Seth Curry will take Kyrie's place on the floor. Bogrich to inbound. Charge. Excellent job by Seth Curry to recognize where the ball was. Novak a bit out of control, saw the lane, but then Curry doing a nice job leaving his guy and squaring up on Novak. But Duke's defense has really been solid. Nothing easy for Michigan in the second half, Jim. Second on Novak, 5 2 now. Smith finally missed one. Going to stay with the Blue Devils. Michigan now, Jim, needs some shots to go down and keep their energy and intensity level up. 
at the defensive end. You like that to be constant no matter what. The shot making helps fuel their defensive intensity. They've made only 33% of their shots here in the second half at the Wolverines. That's Dawkins. Oh, and he bangs home the three from a long range, way outside the arc. Andre Dawkins. Kelly away from the ball. And that's his second. For three on two. He just has so many different guys that can hurt you behind the arc. Dawkins, Kelly can shoot it from there. Obviously, Nolan Smith, singular struggle with this shot, but he's capable. And they've really crowded. Smockridge here. Darius Morris on the bench. So who's going to be able to make the play off the dribble? And Singler with his third. Good shooting 53% and now some separation. Third prior to that break. But things are very fragile now here for the Wolverines. They don't nearly have the offensive firepower that Duke does. And where will they find the offense? To try to get back in it. Hardaway turned 19 on Wednesday. Of course, his dad, he knew a thing or two about the crossover. that old crossover, that UTEP two-step. <laughs> he made famous out there with playing for Coach Don Haskins. Kelly. Big time catch there by Kelly. But the pass might be a little too steep. No problem for Ryan Kelly. Ryan, uh, really was born up in upstate New York. His family moved down to the triad area, to the Raleigh area, and he didn't know which team to support. You know, it's so competitive around there. Both of his parents are educators. They ended up saying, whichever one gave us the free tickets, you know, some parent or friend in the neighborhood, uh -huh. we ended up coming to Duke. He played in uh, high school for a former Duke player, Kevin Billerman. Novak just picked up his third foul, now has the handle. Good job to switch back as Kelly was trying to defend Novak there. Over the top, Smotrich. <laughs> He's he impressive, wanted isn't he? He yeah. wanted a foul, too. He may have deserved one. He got bumped a bit. He's a carefree spirit. That's part of the reason that missed shots don't bother him. He always feels as though the next one is falling. Trying to defend Singler, who takes him to the basket and draws the foul, gets the basket to go. Big time move here. Spun him around like the agitator in the washing machine. And then play through contact. And he liked that one. He doesn't show a lot of emotion. But that one felt good. Spotrich and Bobrich out. Morris returns along with Morgan. Singer who does not look confident from the outside, nor from the line today, but on the penetration. Defensively and around the basket. He's looking. Superior out there on the floor today. Yep, you're exactly right, Jim. Got 13 on the game. And that's why this team has a chance to win it all again. You've got two champions, key players on a national championship team a year ago in Smith and Singles, and they can hurt you at both ends of the floor. And they can go get baskets on their own in tight situations. That's the second on Kelly, or the third actually. Get coverage of the Division I Women's Basketball Tournament at NCAA.com slash Final Four. Darius Morris, just a sophomore out of Los Angeles to shoot two. 
when he got the phone call that Michigan was interested in recruiting him. His older brother was so excited about that. Dwayne Jr., he had played at USF, University of San Francisco, had been through that whole recruiting process, and he thought he had learned from that experience, and he said, hey, it's Michigan, yeah. he said to his younger brother. You gotta listen. You can go back there and restore the glory. <laughs> so Dwayne Jr. helping out his younger brother. Got to be extremely proud of him, too, because Darius has had a fantastic season. And Michigan not out of this yet. They will continue to fight. Duke has to keep attacking and scoring the basketball. Same way wide right on that one. Because Michigan, again, with the ability to knock down threes, Darius Morris can get shots. There's Novak. Damn. Oh, wow. When you have the weapon of the three-point shot, you are never out of a game as long as there's reasonable time on the clock. Novak's made four of those today. That's 15 for the game. Dawkins. And that's going to be on Singler. Singler got pushed, though, I thought. The Michigan player may have pushed him. That's his fourth. Yeah, it is his fourth. But I thought the Michigan player may have bumped Singler into what appeared to be a foul. Is that the 16 foul on, on Duke? So yep. the next one sends Michigan to the foul line. Well, both teams are, well, Michigan already over the limit. So free throw shooting and three point shooting are going to be a big factor, particularly for Michigan, this next nine and a half minutes, Jeff. Kyle replaced by Kelly. Morris tipped out. He'll shoot it from there. Morris never hit the rim with that shot, so 12 to shoot, and hard away comes driving in, and it's single digits. It's down from 15 to 8. His first field goal since midway through the first half. Hard away. A 7 nothing run. Timeout, two. Katie Couric, Ben Stiller, tomorrow's on this day to Carvey. It wouldn't be prudent. Followed by Craig Ferguson, only CBS. And Zach Novak hits a three from way outside, and that helped fuel this 7 nothing run. Yep. Michigan going against the number one seed for the first time since the 1994 regional final in Dallas, where they lost to Arkansas. Arkansas was on its way to winning a national championship here in Charlotte. I'll never forget the game. President Clinton actually attended that regional final mm -hmm. in Dallas. Saw the Hogs beat the Wolverines, and then, of course, he came to Charlotte also to watch Arkansas win the championship over Duke. Buckets. Back of the rim, and the long rebound to Hardaway. His own defense, a little half-court trap, Jim Barry. Pass, Morris to Morgan, and the Wolverines are on a roll. You know Wolverines don't die. You gotta kill him. Well, it was Morgan who told us we like it when our backs are against the wall. And it's gonna be Morgan with that one. With that foul. Excellent look here and a wonderful job of running the floor by Jordan Morgan as he got behind defenders. Poor transition defense and the big finish. Uh, the big young fella in the middle for Michigan, Jordan Morgan. Tenth attempt of the game from the line for Irvin. Nine of ten. That ends in nine nothing. Michigan run. Tough matchup for Kelly out there trying to defend Hardaway. Yeah, he, he settled for that quick jumper. Irving lost it on the baseline. Had a foot on the line. But I think with Hardaway Jr. being defended by a bigger guy, he can't just settle for the three. He's got to recognize who's defending him and look to maybe put the ball on the floor and get to the basket. The next foul, Duke is over the limit as well, so you don't want to just settle for three. Morris. 
foul on Curry. Curry. That's his third. It'll be a one and one. Morgan only a 56% free throw shooter on the year. Smith took a little shot to the mouth. Morgan, who had the only free throw attempt against Tennessee, the miss. One and one. He's got to make this time. Yeah, he likes it. He told us yesterday at the practice. Backs against the wall. It sparks a fight in us. <laughs> yeah, they've got plenty of that. And the two players and coaching staff knew that it would be a test and a challenge. And a two-possession game, plenty of time on the clock. And the half-court, one 3 ones which can flummox opponents if you don't attack it with the dribble and aggressively. You gotta be down in your stance, holding aggressively, or making the diagonal pass for the easy layup. Irving to Kelly. With the rebound, he's had some nice minutes off the bench today. Irving, oh, and Morgan lands on him to commit his fourth. We've got the under eight timeout. Big three by Novak. Hardaway contributing on the run. Margin is eight. Isaiah Thomas of Washington looking for a tying three. Wouldn't have tied the game. It was a two-pointer. And North Carolina moves on to the Sweet 16 over Washington, 86-83. All right, thank you, Greg. Of course, it was kind of strange what happened there with Overton at midcourt. It didn't even look like a shot. He yeah, I think the clock in his head was faster than what the clock was on the, on the court. And as a yeah. result, he forced a shot that he didn't need to take. And there's Morgan with four fouls. Smutrich has four. Novak and Morris with three, so foul trouble on the Michigan side. Smartridge is going to be out there on the floor with 7.32 to go. And Nolan Smith has a pair of free throws here as he was fouled by Morgan on a transition opportunity. Nolan Smith has been brilliant here in this second half. He has been some leader to the freshman three. They call themselves the trio. He's been a big brother to them all. He hosted Kyrie Irving a year ago on his recruiting trip. But again, he came back this year to get his degree. That was first. To repeat, that was second. And his love of his teammates. And of course, Singler did set the pace for him when Kyle said, I'm coming back. Let's go win it again. Taken away by Irving. Boy, it was open. Just a an errant pass because Hardaway had slipped the screen and had a layup if the pass was on target. The pan and gets the soft touch. Excellent job by Smith to operate, splitting that defense against the pick and roll. The game 14 and a half. Including a phenomenal 10-point stretch. Well, that cracked it open. It really yeah. did. That's been the difference in the game. Yep. Pull up Morris. Yes. So he can get that action quite a bit. His size gives him an opportunity to get in the lane and shoot over most guard defenders. And as long as he's on balance and keeps that dribble alive, he can be effective doing that. And DQ is Evan Smotry. Yeah, that's it for him. And he fouls out. Duke in this second half. Dawkins. Well, you just love the way, Jim, that Duke always attacks. Those two off the bench. Singler. That was one of Smotrich's other fouls. Smotrich really just not able to stay on the floor today. Yeah. He had a terrific first half, but the foul trouble eventually stymied him. Just a couple of those fouls, Jim. He just took poor angles and not quite able to move his feet quickly enough out there on the perimeter. 
but he is a promising looking prospect especially the way Michigan plays wanting to stretch and space the floor his shot making ability and he also showed pretty good ball skills and you figure the best time to improve is between your freshman and sophomore season on college. That's so look out. Yeah. Young man who was recruited by Virginia, Notre Dame, Syracuse, Providence College made visits to them all. And Smith's going to get another one here at the line. Actually, I should say any offseason doesn't necessarily have to be between freshman and sophomore year. Any offseason is the time that you really make strides in improving your game. Should mention that Nolan talked about getting that degree. He will graduate May 16th to get his degree, majoring in African American studies. Morgan takes it to the other side. Boy, Darius Moore is so good. Yep. Keeping that bounce alive. First Michigan player to lead the Big Ten Conference in assists since Ramil Robinson. Irving going the other way. Douglas doing a good job of drawing that charge. Yeah, Douglas comes up a little gimpy, but a nice job anticipating the drive, recognizing where the ball was, and got there in good position and on time. Let's see, yep. You don't have to squarely contact the defensive player anywhere up in the torso if he's in legal guarding position. Can earn you the the charge. Curry sits, singular returns with 554 to go. I think Michigan has to continue to play through Morris. He's got to be as sharp as he's been the last couple of trips with his decision making. Switch that small to small. Look at Sandra get down in that defensive stance. Six to shoot. Lawrence, he knows it. Taking on Irving. Better hurry now. Got it away and gets it to go. What a shot by Darius Morris. He was hoping his father could be here today, but his father back home in Los Angeles preaching at a Sunday service at his church. This, if Michigan wants to win this game, come back, be close to home next week in Anaheim. That's Dawkins. Oh, That's Morris. They've gone away with a push off, but here he comes. Inside, beautiful feed, and Michigan's even closer. Now okay. within six. We saw Nolan Smith solo act. Now we're seeing one from Darius Morris. Scoring and setting up his teammates. Boy, he's had two gorgeous no-look passes in this game. Morgan, meanwhile, has 10 all in the second half. That gets away from the Blue Devils. Novak is there. And Michigan attacking an open court situation so they don't have to deal with the half-court defense. A couple of times now, those opportunities for Morgan have been in delayed break situations. Senior can't foul him. Novak, this could get interesting. That's long. Morgan almost able to snatch that offensive rebound. He glanced off his hands. I think both teams need this um, under four minute timeout, Jim. It's been fairly fast and furious the last couple of minutes. Michigan in the zone. It's been, it's been effective for him, Jim. No field goal by the doubles for three and a half. To shoot. Irving. Kelly put back. He has been a huge contributor off the bench. Yes, sir. 11 for the game, 7 in the second half. And a timeout. Michigan's not going to wait for that first whistle in the under four timeout. They call it themselves. Michigan owns the arrow and has possession. Each team with two timeouts. With 320 on the clock. The Michigan team picked in some circles to finish last in the Big Ten. And they looked like they were on their way to that position. Seven games in the league play. They were one and seven. Well, Jim, you can never underestimate or anticipate what's going to bring a 
team together or separated. This team came together. You talked about the meeting that Darius Morris called, the team meeting, and they've been a different team since then. So they actually won in six. They turned it around hard away. Beautiful move to the basket. Nice call play out of the timeout. Anytime you see that kind of execution, you know it's a group that's locked in and ready to execute coming out of the break. At the 10.50 mark, this was a 15-point game. Now a two-score game. Now the defense has been effective in terms of the first shot defense the last few times. Kelly got an offensive rebound, though, so you're vulnerable to that when you're spread out playing the zone. Douglas in part shields Curry from chasing that one down. It'll be Wolverine basketball out of the break. This time, Kyrie Irving going to make an excellent pass to get over the top and through a little bit of traffic. He rifled that thing in there, and Ryan Kelly able to convert. That was an excellent pass, but the diagonal pass is available against the zone because it's trying to shift back, and in that shift and transition, you can hit him with that kind of attack. Now, looking at what Michigan can do, Darius Morris has been fantastic over the last four minutes, either scoring himself or finding open teammates. Nolan Smith matched up on him now, so he doesn't have the height advantage he would have against Curry. He's got it down to six on four occasions, never closer. Until now. Now down to four off the Hardaway jumper. From 58-43 to 70-66. You see how this zone makes you pull up, Jim? That's exactly what Michigan wants you to do. They don't want you to attack. They want you to kind of have that ball over your head and play standing up. Duke has to attack it by getting down and probing it with the dribble. Purposeful dribbling to probe against that zone. Five to shoot. Singler on the baseline, doubled up. And a shot by violation. Hard to believe they weren't even close to getting off a shot. Waited too long. Waited too long. You've got to be ready to attack the zone as soon as you come over half court. You can't pity Pat with the ball. And this is going to be content to play through Morris and Hardaway. Morris, Hardaway Jr. can shoot over Steph Curry anytime he wants to. The three, Hardaway with a huge three. Hard to believe it's down to one. Duke was looking like he was going to put this thing away midway second half. And now it's going to be a fight to the finish to extend the season on the Duke side. Michigan rallying here. Five points in this game, including a three-pointer a moment ago to draw the Wolverines within one, and they would, in fact, shock the world if they pull this one off. From the basement of the Big Ten, Mid-season to now taking the number one seed Duke down to the last minute. Let's see how Duke attacks his zone now. I would expect Michigan to stay in it, Jim. No reason not to. It's really disrupted Duke's rhythm. Let's see if Duke will look to probe more aggressively earlier. They're content to work clock here. I don't like it. I think you've got to go earlier. Dawkins on the wing with a three. Long, tipped around, Novak had a hand on it, it'll go back to two. And a full shot clock here now. Novak knocks down some of the seats, trying to chase after that one. And the young man from Indiana, who grew up thinking he was gonna play for the Hoosiers, used to go to Coach Knight's camp, second, third, and fourth grades, but went Michigan way instead. Now a co-captain of this Wolverine team, showing unbelievable grit here late. Jim, that's who they are. I saw them do the same thing against Kansas. Seemed like they were ready to wilt and fold and ended up taking the game to overtime because they don't quit. Oh, I just did not like this waiting, allowing Michigan to dictate things. Irving, who has not made a field goal, puts it up. Now has one, and it comes at a big time. 
30 seconds to play. Don't need the three if you're missing. You need a high quality shot. The difference is three. If it is a three for a good three point shooter, you take it. Hardaway able to chase that one down. Singer on him tight. And a timeout called by Michigan from the bench. First basket of the game. Let's do back up by three. Chicken with possession coming out of the whole timeout. What do you see him doing here with 19 seconds? Well, we'll see. They play through Hardaway and Morris. Hardaway Jr. and Morris out of timeouts typically, Jim. You don't have to shoot the three here. I mean, you got 19 seconds. If you can get a quick two, you've got Duke in a little foul trouble. The singler has the four. So maybe you look to drive it. But I think you got to put it in Morris's or Hardaway Jr.'s hands in their operating area. Middle of the court, if you can, open the floor and see if they can penetrate and get their shot and maybe kick out to a three-point shooter. Duke, on the other hand, has to be very solid, pressuring the ball without fouling. Nolan Smith on Morris. Novak's made four from three today. 15 seconds to go. They're going to try to shoot the three if they wait too much longer. Morris has an open lane, and he takes the two. And a quick timeout by Michigan. They gave it to him. He drove on him. And Morris seized that open lane. And it's down the one with 10 seconds. That airline is going to nail that frequent flyer with restrictions when he tries to use his miles. That's a lot of red tape. Step on it. Escape the red tape! Now you can with rapid rewards! Come on! Join Rapid Rewards and enjoy unlimited reward seats. Guys, give yourself a chance, two or three seconds, to see if you can force a turnover. I mean, there's no guarantee the ball gets inbounded or that they don't kick it away with some pressure. There is a foul. It's two shots the rest of the way on that side. Inbound to Smith. Yeah, they had to do that because they didn't have a good track. Morris is the one who reached in there. He's holding his right hand, Morris is. That's his fourth. Holding that in the first half, too. He had to sit in the early minutes of this game. In this second half. Duke is 9 of 9 at the line in this half. Think too much time here. If Duke makes this free throw, the foul. My rule would be six seconds and under, plus three foul. But with no timeouts for Michigan, maybe that ball gets over. Wow. Missed the second one. Michigan could win it here with a three. Driving in for the tie. Morris puts it up. Back of the end. No, Smith has the ball. And the Blue Devils are bound for Anaheim. Holding on for a thrilling two-point win over the Wolverines. Jim, that was a fantastic look by Morris. He had wingmen available for threes. Take a look now. This is well done. No fault at all with what transpired here. Knew the clock. He had Douglas looking. Now that was a great shot. He just overshot the touch. That was